welcome back to today's video today i'm going to be cleaning my dirty vacuum i am also going to be uh, sharing with you a kenyan recipe uh, which is going to be ugali and mboga um it is like kenyan food that we used to eat when i was in kenya i also have a grocery haul for my other apartment so i'm going to share with you um that on this video stay tuned to know how you could be entered to win this 2.5 million dollar miami beach house more on that later okay guys so for today's dinner we are going to be making ugali nyama namboga ugali is a kenyan uh, dish so it's ugali nyama namboga which just means ugali <laughs> and beef with vegetables so i am actually making um the meat right now and so for the meat I, as you saw before i just placed it into the pan and then i'm just going to uh, cook that until it kind of turns brown and then once it does then i up i, I add in the um, onions and then i just uh, kind of saute this until they're like really nicely integrated so this is how this is, was one of my favorite meals when i was in kenya and if you don't know i am from kenya hodari is over there pointing stuff at me <laughs> um i am from kenya i have been here for about 14 years now um so uh ugali is definitely a staple for us that we eat on most of the days um so i'm just cutting up some tomatoes uh to add into the nyama and i used a lot of tomatoes this time because i the tomato just gives it a really nice flavor and uh really thick stew which i really like so I you do use quite a bit of those when I'm cooking this but once my once the nyama which is beef and the um, onions had cooked well then I added in to the tomatoes and then I just added in salt and then I'm also going to add in Royco which is a Kenyan um, beef stew so you add it to anything that has beef or that has some sort of stew to it and it just makes it taste really good and it just um, um, just yeah it just elevates the taste of the food and just um, kind of makes the soup a lot thicker as well and this is how it looks like after it's been cooked for a while so I didn't add anything else at all to this it's just tomatoes salt <laughs> and onions with the beef like it was just that simple for that um, and then I'm actually cutting up the cabbage which is the mboga mboga is a vegetable in uh, Swahili uh, so I'm just cutting that up uh, for the side dish for this and when I was in Kenya guys my parents used to own a kiosk which is just a little shop um, so they used to own a little shop and we used to sell vegetables on that shop so for the veg for the vegetables we actually offered a service where we would cut it for you like I'm doing right here like we used to use different methods to cut it and we got so good at it like that you could just cut it so fast <laughs> and I'm not using the, the proper knife for this but that's all I had right now but we used to have a little kiosk when we used to you know cut up vegetables for people and gosh it makes me want to cry just thinking about these memories but um yeah uh, <laughs> that's where i learned how to uh, cut vegetables like this uh it, it's so crazy when you think about all the lives that you live <laughs> like i used to live in kenya cutting vegetables and now i'm in america talking to you about what i used to do guys it i feel like i've lived two lives it's crazy but this is the nyama it's now ready to go i didn't add anything and i know most people are like well how can you not add anything to it um like i feel like the you don't need too many spices um sometimes like i i know we have like different cultures but when i was in kenya we couldn't really afford anything we couldn't really afford a lot of things so we didn't really have a lot of spices uh we couldn't really afford a lot of spices so just salt was enough for most of the foods that we ate and they still tasted pretty good um so i'm just sauteing the cabbage right now and i'm just i just sauteed it for a few minutes so that it can um cook a little bit but still have a bit of a crunch to it and then once everything was done now i'm actually going to be cooking ugali my kids brought the the seats over here so that they can actually watch me but i had to tell them to move away <laughs> so i'm actually using um cornmeal 
to cook the ugali and then this is called a muiko in swahili i don't know what it's called in america it's a little if you know what it's called let me know in the comments but for the ugali um you allow the water to boil and then you just add in the cornmeal which would be maize meal maize uh, flour but we don't use maize flour we use cornmeal here um yeah but in kenya we use maize flour to cook ugali so i just add in little by little and as i cook it thickens until it becomes like a solid now i should be using a, a cloth to hold this sufuria which means stove in swahili but i am not because i am an african woman <laughs> Uh, but uh, usually want to use a um, something to hold the pa the this the pan or whatever you you're cooking on but you just uh, cook it until it becomes a solid and then you um, place it into a, a plate and that is what I'm doing here so the ugali nyama namboga ugali meat and beef is done and meat and beef ugali beef and veggies is done <laughs> and so i'm just gonna serve it up now my boys really like this um they've been eating it a lot actually so they are getting used to eating the ugali and how to hold it i now you will notice that the serving size here may be a little much for some of you guys but it's mostly a lot of stew and then a lot of cabbage um and then they're just gonna eat that with the ugali but i am raising african boys so the servings are going to be big because i want them to be big boys <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> but to actually eat the ugali you're just going to grab the ugali um and then you're just gonna roll it around in your hand and then you just form a little hole in between and then using that hole that's where you're going to place in the nyama beef and the mboga vegetables and you just place it in there and then you eat it and that's how you eat the ugali <laughs> it's unusual i guess to some of you if you're watching this and you've never eaten with your hands but this is how this is one of the foods that we used to eat in kenya and i usually i used to love it a lot because it was really really good <laughs> um i don't really eat it as much here in america but when we were in kenya having meat guys was a treasure like seriously it would be it was a special day when we could have meat um so i just thank god so much for you know allowing me to be in a place where i can eat meat any any time <laughs> So I wanted to say a huge thank you to Omaze for sponsoring this video. Omaze is an online fundraising platform that raises money for charities by offering incredible experiences and prizes. Omaze has actually partnered with Make-A-Wish Foundation, which as you know, grants game-changing experiences to children with critical illnesses. The wishes granted through Make-A-Wish Foundation help ensure courage in kids they also fill families volunteers medical teams and entire communities with hope every donation you make towards this worthy cause enters you for a chance to win this miami dream house which is a 6,000 square foot sanctuary with seven bedrooms six bathrooms and a resort style yard surrounded by lush greenery it has custom cabinetry in the kitchen space for a gym and an office plus an elevator guys it is beyond dreamy spend weekends exploring culturally rich miami lunch in little havana and soak up south beats nightlife this could all be yours you also have the option to choose a cash prize and become an instant millionaire guys to potentially win this 2.6 million dollar miami dream house or 1.8 million in cash go to omaze.com slash martini 
Every donation will support Make-A-Wish Foundation and could help fuel future wishes. Thank you guys so much for supporting such a great cause and good luck. <laughs> okay guys so the next thing that i needed to do was to clean my vacuum now this vacuum has been working quite a bit <laughs> because we've had a lot of activities going on here with sensory beans and whatnot and those can get pretty messy so we had some kinetic sand around the house and so i had to vacuum that up in some areas because it just it wasn't usable at some point so i just needed to vacuum it up and so my vacuum got really really dirty and so i needed to you know get it cleaned up and so i'm going to show you how i usually clean my vacuum when it gets pretty dirty like this so i just start off by removing all of the parts and there are some parts here that i can wash with water and then there are other parts that i don't allow to get any any contact with water because then it would actually damage the machine so i just separate all the parts and i put um the ones that i can you know rinse with water into the tub so that i can actually start working on those items So starting off with the vacuum pod, I am actually just going to rinse this off mostly because most of this is just sand. So I just rinse it off to get it all out of there. Um, I actually, it's actually easier to clean this when you have like a bigger and skinnier um, brush, but I don't have, I didn't have that here. So I just had to work with what I had. So, um, I just scrubbed all of the sand out of there and just rinsed it until it was clear. And then I just used my little, um, sponge to clean the inside as well. And that seemed to work really well, even though I didn't really have like a, a brush that could go all the way in there. I still was able to clean it pretty well with those two items. Be sure to let me know in the comments how you like to clean your vacuum and how often you actually do it uh, do you clean it this deep as i'm doing here um i just saw another video of somebody doing this so that's kind of how i know how to do it like this and i've done it a few times and it seems like it, it, it does a pretty good job of cleaning it especially when there's a clog in there um this it has been the best way for me to get that out and to make sure that it actually functions properly but let me know in the comments how do you clean your vacuum and how often do you clean them So next up, I'm going to start cleaning the hoses. Now with the hoses, um, it's actually pretty easy to clean. It just takes a little bit of time sometimes. Um, I just usually just run the water through the hose and allow it to release all of the, um, you know, all of the gunk that may be stuck in there. And then I just kind of stretch it um, just to make sure that it like it's anything that might be inside the little uh, whatever they're called <laughs> anything that may be inside there actually comes out so i usually will do this until the water starts to run clear so then i know that it's actually clean and then i'll just wash the outside of it with soap and a sponge and that's pretty much what i do for the hoses but it came from what I'm
And then for the filters, I'll just usually rinse this um, and then I'll also add some soap to it to just make sure that you know all of the dirt comes off and I'm usually pretty gentle with this so I don't scrub too rough I just scrub gently scrub it just to make sure that it you know kind of comes off and it um, all of the dirt anything that may be in there comes off So to clean the bottom part I actually used scissors to clean this but I lost that footage of me doing that but I just used scissors to get rid of all of the hairs that uh, was stuck in there and then after that I just used my microfiber cloth to kind of wipe away all of the dirt and all the stuff that was kind of stuck in there so used scissors to get all the way in there in those little areas that I couldn't really reach uh, with my hand So for the rest of the vacuum, I just wiped it down in most of the areas that, you know, I have holes. I will just put my microfiber cloth in there and use my scissors to get it through to the other side because I didn't really have anything that I could use to really clean that area properly. But this worked out just fine. So I would just um, use my scissors and I'll just pull the microfiber clothing through and it cleaned it pretty well so I would just do this rinsing the clothing as much as possible until the area was completely cleaned and then I also just cleaned up the whole machine um, just give it a good wipe down um, all over uh, just to make sure that it was completely clean So I didn't want to get any water in this area because this is where most of the operation is. So I just tried to kind of shake this because there was some, you know, sand and things in there. I wish I had a blower so that I could just blow all of that away. But I just uh, play, added some product to my microfiber cloth and then I just tried to kind of wipe as much as possible in that area without adding water in there um, just to make sure that nothing gets damaged in there um, and then I just wiped it all up just to make sure that it was all nice and clean And so once I finish cleaning everything, I just will place them on top of a mat to allow them to air dry overnight. And then usually the next morning, it's usually all pretty dry and ready to go. So this actually just works out perfectly for me to clean at night and then leave it and then use it the next morning. Oh, 
Okay guys, so we just got back in from grocery shopping. Um, I ended up going to Costco and Walmart. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got from both of those places. I ended up spending a little bit more than I wanted to spend. But I also needed a little bit more this time around. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what we got. Um, so I'll start with the Costco items first. Okay guys, so starting off with Costco, this is what I got. I bought russet potatoes and then I bought this other type of potatoes, these baby potatoes. Um, I got uh, Lysol wipes, dishwater, dishwasher detergent. <laughs> um, I always forget what these are called. Uh, scent boosters, OxyClean, Kiwi, grape tomatoes. I love this for my salads. Um, bacon, ham for sandwiches, chia seeds, uh, olive oil, and I usually get the extra uh, virgin olive oil, pineapple, ketchup, lemons, um, and then I got this sweet kale uh, superfood salad. I love this salad. It comes with broccoli, green cabbage, kale. It's so good. I love it. Avocados, bananas, strawberries, blueberries, bell peppers. And this one has uh, three different colors. Uh, laundry detergent, whipped cream, uh, orange juice, raspberries, milk spinach now i usually get the spinach in a box but i ended up going with this this one in a bag because i actually want to uh put some of them in the freezer for smoothies and then eggs i also got um mangoes but um my my, my sons decided to start eating those so mangoes and uh cookies as well and then also i got paper towels and tissue paper so that was it for uh, Costco and so in total for Costco I ended up spending 300 <laughs> I ended up spending three hundred and twenty one dollars guys uh, yeah spent way more than I wanted to but to be honest um, these are all things that are going to uh, last me for a few weeks, so I'm okay with that. I think the most expensive item here was the Tide Pods, right here. Um, the Tide Pods, and then OxyClean was $18. Uh, Cascade Platinum was $19. Cascade Platinum? Which one is that? Huh? Cascade. Oh, yeah, that's uh, the dish the dish shop. Yeah, so those are some of the biggest items. And then the bacon was $18. But yeah, in total, that was $321 for Costco for these items. And then I'm going to show you the ones for Walmart. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys what I got from Walmart. So, starting here, I got two packs of this salted caramel brownie mix. Um, I am gonna be making those for the kids. And then I got some pen pasta for uh, spaghetti we're gonna have. Not spaghetti, whatever. We're gonna have something. Um, mixed fruits. I love this one. This one has pineapple, strawberries, peaches, and mangoes. And this one is a berry blend. So I got four, two of each of those. Um, I got some brown sugar. I ran out of brown sugar. Apples. I got granny apples. Well, no, those are not granny. Honey crisp apples and granny apples. Got some more bananas. This ones are a little bit more ripe than the other ones. Um, and then I got pancake mix, the Auntie Jemima's one. I have never actually had this one. 
Um, I think the other one that I had is a different brand, but I wanted to try this one. Um, and then I got Quick Shine, which is um, something that I use on my floor. It really makes the floor really shine, and it's for uh, multi-surface, so I really like that one. And I got a Ben & Jerry Salted Caramel Ice Cream. <laughs> I love this Salted Caramel Ice Cream. It tastes so good. <laughs> And then I got this, um, I think it's tagine. Um, I usually put this on mangoes. Uh, we used to have this, something similar to this in Kenya. Uh, but yeah, here I think this is a Mexican brand. Uh, but um, this is, I usually like to put it on mangoes. And then I got some Clorox bleach. Car scents. I got the Hawaiian uh, scent. Uh, Lysol uh, for my toilet. And then I got some, um, I keep saying, and then I got some, <laughs> uh, I got corn, uh, mix, uh, broccoli and cauliflower medley, ragu sauce, we're going to be making, I, we're going to be making pasta this week, I guess, um, and then onions, grapes, I usually will get my grapes from Costco, but this time around they did not have any, so I ended up getting those from Walmart, and then I got tomatoes, uh, pickles, I have been really enjoying this, I never before was a big fan of pickles, uh, but nowadays I love them, so I really like those, that brand, and then I got the boys this um, juice, this is a, a cherry go round, and I got two of those. They already, uh, we already opened one, and then I got this Wonder Bread for uh, sandwiches. I forgot to show you guys this, but we, I also bought some uh, Boom Chica Pop popcorn. Um, I really love this. I love this brand. It's it's really good. So I got those. We already opened it, honestly, um, and then I got um, margarine sausages and then on this side I got kale I'm gonna be making uh, juices so I got kale and I got beets for that and then I got parsnips asparagus uh, green beans celery sticks and usually for my flaws, I tend to use Grove Collaborative, but I decided that I wanted to try something different. So I'm going to be using this Mr. Clean All Purpose or Multi Surface Cleaner uh, for my flaws. So I got those in um, the Gain Scent. So I want to try this and see how it is. Let me know what you use for your flaws and if you've actually used this before. I definitely want to see how it works. And then um, some softener. So I got the Downy and um just this scrub i wanted to use this to clean my vacuum so that is pretty much it for the grocery haul now i'm just gonna work on putting everything away and yeah i forgot to mention to you guys but i actually ended up spending around 168 dollars uh for all of these items at walmart so i'm gonna calculate the total and tell you guys uh, put it on the screen here for how much i spent <laughs> This time around, um, it was 321 plus 168, so 4, 480, 488 or $490, almost $500, <laughs> almost $500 on this items. Um, yeah, it, I kind of went a little bit overboard, but as I mentioned, all of these items will last me uh, more than two weeks so I'll even say three or four weeks I'm gonna have to I'm gonna be using this items for so I think that was it's a bargain for me I don't really mind that because I know I'm not gonna have to buy most of these items again so yeah let's go ahead and put them away
guys that is it for today's video if you enjoyed it be sure to leave me a like and a comment down below letting me know what you think don't forget to click the link down below and enter for a chance to win the prices that i listed earlier and guys if you're not subscribed make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned for more content but i'll see you on the next one Bye bye